The Maffal Army. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Would the Secretary of State agree with me that if the Prime Minister's deal negotiated with the European Union is ratified by this House, on leaving the European Union, the United Kingdom will have higher, better, stronger workers' rights than the bare bones provided by the European Union? Yes, my honourable friend is exactly right. Daphne. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. The Tory party talks about protecting workers. Thomas Cook, no say and no pay. ASTA, sign or resign. Royal Mail, agreements are made, not been honoured. So where is your intervention from the Tory government? You are further weakening workers' rights after Brexit, including health and safety. So can the Minister tell us why there is no legal protection for existing workers' rights in the withdrawal agreement? Well, the Honourable Gentleman is not correct. There are protections for workers' rights in UK legislation. And as I've explained to many Honourable and Right Honourable Members, the UK's protections for workers and rights for workers go far beyond any of the EU's minimum standards. And we are proud of that fact. And we have every intention to further enhance those workers' rights as we go forward. Andrew Percy. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, Speaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As she rightly pointed out, uh, parties of both sides have expanded workers' rights far beyond the EU um, uh, minimums. So, can she go further in calling this campaign out for what it is? It is a grubby attempt to divide employees from employers. It is a deliberate campaign, politically motivated campaign of misinformation. And moreover, it is deeply insulting to the British electorate to suggest that they are incapable of electing people to this place who would share their yeah. aims and intentions of wanting to go yeah, further yeah, in protecting yeah, workers' yeah. rights. Yes, my honourable friend is exactly right. It is a great shame that when this House has so much to be proud of in our combined record on workers' rights, that somehow opposition parties are now trying to suggest that the only way to protect workers in the UK is by staying a part of the European Union. That is blatantly untrue. It's blatantly scaremongering. This government has a very proud record of enhancing workers' rights that we look forward to being able to continue once we've left the European Union. Lady Herman. Thank you very much indeed, Mr Speaker. The Right Honourable Lady will know that responsibility for workers' rights is a devolved matter for the Northern Ireland Assembly. She will also know that we have not had a functioning Assembly for almost three years. The Secretary of State for Northern Ireland has been dedicated to the restoration of the Assembly and the Executive. His valiant efforts are now being deliberately, willfully undermined by the Prime Minister's stunt of an early general election. How on earth does the Right Honourable Lady reconcile the efforts of the Secretary of State for Northern Ireland to have the institutions restored in Northern Ireland and the Prime Minister's stunt of an early general election? <laughs> Well, my right honourable friend, the Secretary of State for Northern Ireland, is in his place and will have heard what the honourable lady had to say. And, of course, it is the case that the parties in Northern Ireland have had ample opportunity to come together. The Prime Minister has sought at every turn, as did his predecessor, to find an accommodation so that all parties in Northern Ireland can reform the Northern Ireland Assembly. It is a top priority for this Parliament, but so too is delivering on the will of the people at the 2016 referendum. It is not acceptable that we have failed yet to deliver on the decision by the United Kingdom to leave the European Union, and we must do so. 